I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Seven p.m. So good evening and welcome to the Monday, March twenty-sixth meeting of the Pembroke Board of Se Selectmen. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is also being recorded for airing on this channel at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. There are two announcements this evening. The first being the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day, which will be held at Pembroke Recycling Center on Saturday, April 28th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Items which are acceptable and not acceptable are listed on the town website at www.pembroke-ma.gov. You must be a town resident, have a current recycling sticker, and you cannot dispose of business or commercial hazardous waste. The fall date for hazard household hazardous waste collection will be November 3rd. The second announcement is that the DPW has announced that work will resume this week on the Route 14 project as Mass DOT will be working in the areas of the roundabout to the center as well as from the center to Route 53. Motorists are advised to expect delays and seek alternate routes. Mr. Chairman. May I add another announcement? Absolutely. Uh, I've been asked by somebody to make this uh, public notice that the Recreation Commission uh, will be holding its annual Easter egg hunt on the Town Green. Uh, it's this Thursday at 4.30 at the Town Green. And you can also get more information. Uh, the Pembroke Recreation Commission has their own uh, Facebook page, uh, so you can look them up. Thank you. All right. It's a great event. Moving on to the board action items. Number one. A vote to grant temporary trailer permit. The board voted on January 8, 2018 to grant the town administrator the authority to sign temporary trailer permits for a period of 30 days. Mr. Thorne approved a temporary trailer permit as an interim measure to American Mobile Homes on behalf of the resident at 30 Yale Road who requires a temporary living quarter as the result of a fire. American Mobile Homes requested a temporary trailer permit on behalf of homeowner Gilbert Jenniger, Jenniger. Almost missed that up. To place a temporary trailer, 14 feet by 70 feet, at 30 Yale Road as temporary living quarters as the result of fire damage. The six month permit is renewable. I move grading the permit. Second. For six months. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. So it passes unanimously. The next board action item is a to consider the request of the police chief, and he is requesting a civil service list for up to five permanent intermittent police officers. Police Chief Richard Wall has submitted a written request to the selectmen to vote to request a civil service list for permanent intermittent officers. 
the department's permanent intermittent list of active PIs is down to two names, with pending retirements approaching in the hope of a successful town meeting vote. The chief needs to reconstitute this list. Moves the recommendation of the police chief to request the civil service list for up to five permanent intermittent officers. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so that passes unanimously. The next board action item is to consider the, another request of the police chief, and this request is to appoint Erin or Earl Turnbull, an auxiliary officer slash special officer, as well as to appoint another. And I believe, Lou, you had a few comments on this. I did, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We received a... Uh a second letter of uh, request from the chief of police and the chief in addition to asking us to appoint Earl Trumbull of Edgewater Drive as an auxiliary police officer and a special police officer the chief would like to add a second nomination for that same post and that nomination would be to add Christopher E. Mazzola of Valley Street to also be named along with Mr. Trumbull as an auxiliary police officer and a special police officer. So, having said that, uh, with no uh, comments from anyone, I thank you. I would move that the board appoint Earl B. Trumbull of Edgewater Drive and Christopher E. Mazzola of Valley Street as auxiliary police officers and special police officers, and this is recommended by the chief of police. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so this passes unanimously. Moving on to a vote to extend a temporary town clerk appointment, term two days in 48 hours. The Elections Division of the Office of Secretary of State has advised that the temporary appointment of Mary Ann Smith as interim town clerk needs to be extended by two days. On February 5th, 2018, the Board of Selectmen voted to appoint Mary Ann Smith as interim town clerk from March 29th, 2018 to May 17th, 2018, which is five calendar days after the election of May 12th, 2018 to allow her to certify the election. It should have been five business days, which will be May 19th, 2018. A new town clerk would take office five business days after the election, allowing the prior town clerk to certify the results of the election in which they were elected. Ms. Smith, Ms. Smith's resignation is effective March 29th, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I would move to appoint Mary Ann Smith as the interim town clerk from March 29, 2018 to May 19, 2018. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? President not voting is on a candidate for that office. All right, so Thank we have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No problem. So. I vote I as well, so that passes three to zero to one. Moving on to vote language on ballot question two to submit to town clerk for the town election ballot. Question one. Last week, the board voted to submit a single override question to be placed on the town election ballot. The board has requested information regarding submitting an explanation to appear on the ballot as well. The Department of Revenue has indicated that the Elections Division of the Office of the Secretary of State will not allow an explanation on an override question. The Board does, does have an option of voting on a different question this evening that will include more description in the wording of the question. The Board has before them two examples of single override questions. The first example, general category, is the question that the Board decided upon last week. The multiple departmental purposes with allocation question provides more detail. 
And just for clarity, I will read both to the view so the viewers at home can hear them. Option one is shall the town of Pembroke be allowed to assess an additional 708,000 in real estate and personal property for the purposes of funding public safety and highway expenses for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018? Yes or no. Option two is shall the town of Pembroke be allowed to assess an additional 708,000 in real estate and personal property for the purposes of funding the the following departmental expenses. Police department, 204,000. Fire department, 204,000. And public works department, 300,000. For the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018. Uh, for discussion, Mr. Chairman, I think that the, since we cannot have a separate explanation um, and I suppose the the reasoning is that it would it could have depending on how it was written it could try to sway the voter one way or another so um, I don't blame uh, the state for coming down with that uh, determination uh, but I do see that the second suggested motion does give more information to the voter while he's in the while they're in the the booth it gives a total of seven hundred eight thousand and then it's uh, shows how that money will be uh, split up between the police department, fire department, and public works department. Um, so uh, just as a matter of discussion, I, I would lean toward more information for the voter in the voters in the booth. I would agree with you. Mr. Chairman, I would also agree with that. I, I think the more uh, description we can give the voters in this very important vote is what we should be doing. And uh, that we're allowed to do this, and I think it does give uh, exactly what it is we want. So I would also support uh, number two. All right, it does sound like we all support this. <coughs> However, we do need a motion on this question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I will, I would move that the uh, board vote to accept uh, suggested motion number two uh, as uh, what we have placed on the ballot. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of moving forward with option two? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I vote aye as well, so that passes unanimously. All right, we have a second question in relation to the ballot question. And these, the explanation. Mr. So Chairman, if I may. Yes. So the, the Town Government Study Committee has been working on this question for uh, well over two years now. And they have put forth this question uh, that the town, that a town manager be installed as, uh, as the managing body of the town of Pembroke. We will have the, the committee, of which I'm a member, uh, the committee will have a full explanation and, uh, and debate and dialogue for town meeting floor, but we, are, we need to put a ballot question forward here as a board. Uh, we're under a time constraint to do so. The suggested motion from town council to do so is, and I'll read it out loud, uh, shall, an, shall an act entitled an act Establishing a town manager form of government for the town of Pembroke be accepted, yes or no. So it's as simple as that. It's a very long article, as you can imagine, because it includes uh, the town manager's job description, his duties, uh, everything that the town manager uh, will do for the town and the differences between the town administrative form of government that we have uh, will be in that article and be discussed in town meeting floor. And also, the uh, the government study committee is going to be here before the selectmen next Monday night uh, so that they can get the word out to the public of, um, of why this change is needed. But for our purposes here tonight, uh, I make a motion to include, if you'll allow a motion, uh, make a motion to 
move to include the following question on the ballot for the May 12, 2018 election. Uh, as I mentioned, shall an act entitled an act establishing a town manager form of government for the town of Pembroke be accepted? Yes or no? That's my motion. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, and thank you, Dan, for the explanation. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. This is passes unanimously and will be on the ballot come May 12th. The next board action item is to consider recommendations on the uncontested articles, which are 10, 11, 12, 13, 22, and 24. And we will be considering our own recommendation on these articles. I'll read these articles now. Article 10 is to approve pilot for medical office. Article 11 is to adopt a minimum value of 10,000 PP tax. And the assessors recommend a minimum value of 10,000 to collect personal property tax. Article 12 is to amend bylaw to reduce members of the advisory committee. Article 13 is 5,000 for the South Shore Community mm -hmm. Action Committee. And Joe Cosio had appeared back on February 5th to move that article. Article 22 is to establish a capital stabilization fund. Article 24 is for the CPC annual appropriation article. Did you mind if I just threw in the article numbers changed a bit? You'll notice that it looks a little different. There is a withdrawal of the land swap for the Swanberg wellhead. So those numbers have changed, but the articles remain the same. The establishment of the capital stabilization fund is now Article 22, and the CPC annual appropriation is now Article 24. All right. I'm sorry about that. No problem. The capital stabilization stays at 26. It is Article number 22 today, right now. Okay, thank you. You got it. Sabrina, can we have a motion for all of these or do they each need an individual motion? They need an individual motion. You can move them any way you choose, but if you want to discuss them, you would take them individual. Okay, thank you. Sure. Mr. Chairman, in Article 10, approve the uh, payment in lieu of taxes for medical office. Our recommendation is favorable action, and I would move the recommendation of the advisory committee. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so that passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman, in Article 11, I would move that we adopt a minimum value of $10,000 personal property tax based on the assessor's recommendation to assess and collect personal property taxes. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. So this passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we amend the bylaw to reduce the members uh, of the advisory board, the advisory committee, can uh, request that the amendment be there to reduce their members and establish a quorum of their body as a majority of seats filled versus overall membership with vacancies. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. This is passed unanimously. Mr. Chairman, I would move on Article 13, $5,000 for social community action. This has been recommended favorably. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Being none, I vote aye as well. So this passes unanimously. Is this the new Article 22? Yes. To the capitalization establish fund? a capitalization fund. So we're withdrawing this or we're just um, moving it as a new number? No, nope, just moving it as the number t number 22. Okay, I would move Article 22 to establish a capitalization stabilization fund. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, 
I vote as well. So this passes unanimously. And in Article 24, the CPC Annual Appropriation Article, I would recommend favorable action on behalf of the selectmen. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote as well. This is passes unanimously. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to old business. Uh, does anybody have anything for this section of the meeting tonight? Actually, apologies. We want to back up a little bit. We'll, before we go to old business, we will vote to accept the minutes of March 12th, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of March 12th as written. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. So we accept the minutes unanimously. Now moving on to old business. Does anybody have anything for this section tonight? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to the town administrator's report. Uh, Ed was actually called out of town tonight unexpectedly, but we'll be returning later this week, and we will get this week's report next week. So go ahead and move on to ask the selectmen. Did any, anybody have anything for this tonight? Uh, I do, Mr. Chairman. I received an email that I'm just looking at in my packet now from, uh, from McCarran Price. I'm going to look at this. She would like to know when the next capital funding study committee uh, will be held. Uh, it will be next Wednesday night uh, is when it will be held. And uh, I will try to find your, Karen, I'll try to find your email address. I think it's in here in this, and I'll get you that information. Uh, but we, were going, we are not having one this Wednesday. Uh, we will be having a capital funding study committee next Wednesday, most likely at 6 o'clock right here at the town hall. Uh, public is always welcome. Uh, it's only attended by the members of the committee thus far, but the public is, is always wel welcome. But I'll send you a personal invite out, uh, Ms. Bryce. All right. Thank you for responding to her. Does anybody else have anything under Ask the Selectman? All right, hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to new business. Uh, was there anything under, did anybody have anything for this section tonight? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to the upcoming issues. On April 2nd at 7 p.m., the Plymouth County Treasurer, Tom O'Brien, will be in for a Plymouth County retirement discussion. On April 9th at 7 p.m., the Town Government Study Committee will be in regarding a warrant article. On April 23rd, UMass Present will be here with a long-range forecasting model, revenues, and expenditures. On April 23rd also, there will be the signing of the Town Meeting Warrants. April 30th, the Advisory Committee will, have, will host a finance presentation. On May 8th, the annual town meeting will take place, and on May 12th, the annual town election will take place. A busy few months upcoming for Pembroke. Okay. We, do we have a need for executive session? Yes, we do. Yes, we do, Mr. Chairman, and I would move that the board go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, River Marsh, Water Street, MH-916. Second. Okay, so I so declare, and the board will not return to open session at the conclusion of executive session. And since we have a motion and a second, we will now take a roll call on votes. Yes. 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 Okay, I vote yes as well. So we'll be moving on to executive session. We will not be returning to public session. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I'll see you next week.